Hey, I'm here with chapter four of The Invisible Dog. And keep in mind that this book takes place in England. So when um, Janie, this, in this chapter, Janie's gonna get a special treat and it's in London, but that's right near her house, not like if you got a treat to go to London, which would be a huge trip. Okay, chapter four. Janie's birthday was in the early part of January, and for a treat each year, she was always taken to London, to the zoo, or the wax museum, or the Tower of London, or the Natural History Museum. What shall we do for Janie's birthday outing this year? Janie's mother said to her husband. Can you think of something a bit out of the ordinary? As a matter of fact, I can, he said. What? The dog show. The dog show? Yes, might be rather fun, don't you think? Which day? It's a four-day show, I seem to remember. On the fourth day, I think. Why? Don't tell me, David. I can read you like a book. Great Danes are judged on the fourth day. That's it, isn't it? Well, yes. I mean, I know they're your favorite breed, Sally. Not by any chance yours, too. Well, yes, but I just thought it might be fun for Janie. I see. Don't you think it might be a bit hard on the child? She may not be satisfied with an invisible Great Dane. It isn't as if you had any intention of buying a puppy. No, said Janie's father, though I told Janie she could buy one. You did what? I said that if she came along with 500 pounds clutched in her hot little hand, I wouldn't stop her from buying a Dane puppy. You say the dumbest thing sometimes. Next thing you know, she'll be robbing a bank. Well, shall we go to the dog show or not? Ask Janie. A dog show? Janie said when the idea was put to her. Yes, the biggest of them all. Probably there'll be something like 20,000 dogs there altogether of every breed. Great Danes? Of course. Harlequin Great Danes like Henry? Sure to be some, though they'll look a bit different from Henry. Why? Well, you can't see him too well. Can he come to the show? No. Poor old boy, said Janie, fondling an invisible ear. I'll tell you all about it afterwards. Apart from those old snapshots of Rupert, Janie had never in her life set eyes on a Great Dane until that unforgettable day shortly after her eighth birthday. They had walked into the Great Hall and made their way past the judging of a whole lot of other breeds, terriers and collies and gun dogs and many more, and suddenly there were the giants, a ring full of them, black and blue, fawn and brindle and harlequin. They stood and showed themselves in all their majestic dignity. By chance, the judge was a little woman, small enough, it seemed to Jane, to have gone for a ride on any one of the great dogs whose points she was so carefully examining. Janie and her mother and father stayed at the ringside watching as class succeeded class, and the handlers stood their charges before the little judge or walked or ran around the ring, the huge dog striding out beside them. And here's the illustration. And you see, there's a big crowd up in the stands. And then there are all these people down there with their Great Danes getting judged. And this looks like the judge right here. So she um, touches the dogs and looks at their ears and eyes. And um, she's trying to judge which ones are the most beautiful and best trained ones there. Big or short, thin or fat, old or young, they all had something in common, thought Janie. A great, big, beautiful Dane. If only we could have one someday, she said to herself. A man beside them noticed the rapt expression on Janie's face. I bet you wish you had a dog like one of those, he said with a smile. Actually, said Janie, I have. He's called Henry. Imagine that, said the friendly man. 
Henry's uh, rather out of the ordinary, Janie's mother said. Out of this world, said her father. Janie and her parents stayed and watched till the end of the judging, till the little woman had made her choice between best dog and the other best. Both appeared equally beautiful to Janie. Every one of the Danes there, it seemed to her, were faultless. She couldn't see any difference between them except color, but she desperately wanted the male to win best of the breed because just by chance, he was a Harlequin and her wish was granted. He's beautiful, Janie said. Isn't he just? They all were, weren't they? Afterward, they went around the benches and there he was with his rosettes and his prize cards and his proud owner. Janie pushed through a small crowd of admirers to get a closer look. The dog, she could see, knew what a clever fellow he was. He had a kind of smile on his great face and his long tail wagged slowly, majestically. And that word majestically is sort of like um, proudly. It comes from the same word as um, majesty, like your majesty for a king. So it's sort of royal and proud. He's called Champion Lark Meadow Nobleman of Merlin Court, she told her parents. Gosh, what a mouthful. But his owner called him Bob. I just heard him. That's better. Funny thing, though, said Janie. What? He looked exactly like Henry. So there's the dog that won, and the dog has a really long name, but his owner just calls him Bob. So Bob looks like Janie imagines Henry looks. And that, the end of the dog show, is the end of the chapter. Okay, so we'll be back to do chapter five.